Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and people today I'm going to show you how to create the stamp effect around your images. Let me show you the browser preview. This is Google Chrome and this is the way things will appear. Uh, you see there's a, a, a box shadow all around the image. Now this shadow won't appear inside uh, browsers which are not WebKit browsers. We have used a WebKit only uh, filter, WebKit filter, drop shadow. We'll talk about it a little later. Okay, so uh, in the other browsers like Opera and uh, Firefox, etc., you'll see the stamp effect, but you'll not see the box shadow. Right, and uh, so let's begin. Let's begin and uh, let's recreate the whole thing all over again, almost all over again. So uh, you'll get a much better idea how easy it is to actually do this. I've used the core of uh, you know creation of this effect is radial gradient people that's it not at all too difficult I'm gonna walk you through in a manner where you're gonna find it extremely easy trust me on that okay so let's get back to sublime text 2 which is emit package enabled which allows me to code real quick and um, so what we'll do is or what I'll do is I'll uh, delete most of the code preserve some of the code and then we'll go about it uh, coding again right so let's do the deletion process first right so in the opening and the closing uh, style tags I've deleted in fact let's not delete everything let's delete this bit right and this bit so I'm just gonna keep the name of the rules body dev dot stamp etc and this webkit filter uh, statement declaration I'm gonna keep this <coughs> right um, notice out here in line number 14 that I am using opening closing script tags which is actually pointing to in a JS folder a prefix free dot min dot JS file let me bring up my local site folder or the uh, folder where all the uh, you know access are located locally I have a JS folder which has prefix uh, free dot min dot JS file now what this file does is it allows you to uh, write CSS 3 prefix free code so you don't have to uh, you know use dash webkit dash dash or dash dash mos dash etc before your CSS3 properties that will be taken care of by prefix free dot min dot js file very, very cool you can grab this file off the internet absolutely free people just need to search it uh, intelligently and I'm sure you'll get it if you still can't let me know I'll uh, push it your way somehow right -o. So just after the opening closing style tags, I have the opening closing script tags pointing to prefix free prefix free dot min dot js minified that is right. And let's examine what is there in the body of the document. Just one division of the class of stamp uh, with an image uh, img dot ping alterate text whatever whatever. All right. So if I see the local site folder, I just have one single image which is this image it's 184 by 184 px and this is referred to as img.png png png image okay if at this point I were to save the document up and bring the browser and refresh all I should be left with is the uh, image with a drop shadow people because of uh, webkit only uh, property webkit dash filter dash webkit dash filter drop shadow it's a webkit browsers only property it's very similar to the way you create um, box shadow but box shadow wouldn't really work out here because of the uh, you know the edges of the stamp it looked uh, absolutely absurd this doesn't so that's the reason I've not used box shadow don't even try people it won't look nice okay so let's start uh, creating my rules for the body, let's say a background of uh, AAA, very mild grayish color, and let's say a padding of hundred all around. I'm expanding uh, expanding the code uh, 
quickly because of emit code assist package okay refresh to see the browser preview in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable this image so I'm gonna make it a comment how do you do that let's see okay this is the way you actually create comments people yeah now it's a comment it won't render out now if I save the document bring the browser up if I refresh the image won't render out very, very cool and for the second rule uh, all divs with the class of stamp you see this div has a class of stamp <coughs> let's uh, start pushing in declarations let's say mm, a width of 184 plus a height of 184 uh, very cleverly matching the width and the height of the division itself okay let's add in a padding of 8 all right just need some uh, cushion all around the picture and if I were to save the document up bring the browser up let's refresh in fact uh, I don't have the image enabled it's actually disabled because it's a comment now okay so let's say background and white okay yep and see how beautiful the uh, drop shadows actually looking cool next people I'm gonna use radial gradient again through the background property and there's a spatial syntax that you need to follow and that which is this radial radial gradient okay and then the name of the colors let's say from a trans parent to white now why I actually use the background color uh, white is simply because just in case this doesn't fire this will be the fallback this is important line 15 is important people just in case line 16 uh, cannot be understood by the browser as in the case of IE line 15 will take effect but make sure it's above line 16 above the radial gradient statement okay so if at this point I save the document bring the browser up and refresh see the radial gradient from transparent to white but this is not what I want I'm gonna make some changes uh, I'm gonna use the transparent color all over again but I'm gonna use a color stopper like this and then white color again but use a color stopper like this in fact this color stopper yeah, I think everything is fine so color 1 color 2 with a stopper color 3 with a stopper and color 4 without a stopper which means 100% actually if I save the document up let's see what is gonna happen now okay very very simple I've actually created a hole <coughs> I bore a hole through the division which is uh, 4 px in diameter with the hard edges how did I actually achieve the hard edges if you have a look at the the code the first color transparent extends up to 4 px and uh, from there we have white extending up to 4 px too so that will create the hard edge people transparent ending at 4 px white starting at 4 px that will create the hard edge and the effect is a hole through the division a transparent hole people see this color and this color at the back is the same it was slightly darker simply because of uh, can you guess it drop shadow Web dash web dash filter colon drop shadow yep actually it's a transparent hole right next up people what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use the <coughs> background size property I'm gonna resize my background make it pretty small which is 20 px x-axis horizontal vertical horizontal vertical size people control is to save let's see the effect Oh, so I have a small, uh, a small backgrounds of 20 by 20 uh, px each. It's a kind of a repeating radial gradient, right? Oh. Next, people, what I'm gonna do is gonna give you a very nice effect. Background uh, position. Okay, I'm gonna shift the. Notice the uh, the holes, people. These transparent holes. If I can just shift it 
towards the top a little bit, towards the left a little bit. I can align these transparent holes along the edges, which they are not. That is important that you align it along the edges. Only then can you get these stamp effect people. Okay, so if you are using an image of a different size, you may need to use different mathematical calculations people. I really can't help you there. You need to do a little bit of a trial and error out there. Right. So, uh, for me, what works is minus 10 px towards the top and towards the left. So, and minus 10 px. <coughs> Save the document, bring the browser up. Now, the, uh, you know, the dots, the transparent dots are aligned pretty much along the edges and not sitting pretty inside, you know. Uh, like, like they were earlier. Now I can easily get the stamp effect if I actually push in the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to disable the comment and enable the picture, which is 184 by 84, 184, which is the same as the diff size, but which has a padding. So if I save the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> file and refresh. Oh, <laughs> what's this? I think I, by mistake, removed the uh, opening, uh, you know, the opening tag, which is also the closing tag. It's a self-closing tag. People, you don't need to close the image, right? So if I refresh now, I should see the picture bang inside in the center of the division with the edges that appear like it's a stamp. So it wasn't too difficult if you, uh, you know, if we go through it. Uh, we see that I've used not only the uh, you know the radial gradient uh, CSS3 property. I've also I've, I've had to use the background size and background position property by default. If the background size is pretty small, you know, the the background is going to repeat itself. That's the default behavior, right? And through the background position property, I can shift my background few pixels uh, in any of the four directions, right? And for the first time, probably you saw how to use the dash webkit dash filter drop shadow. Uh, webkit only browsers property. So people, I hope you f uh, found this information useful. I'll leave a link in the description for you to copy the code. All right. So uh, if you found uh, the stuff useful and informative, please uh, thumb the video up. Please sub, subscribe. Please uh, mm, comment and please do. Visit me again. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Peace.